So I'm, I'm Luke Whitmire. I am uh, the Chief Science Officer of Brain Sentinel. As Tom said, we've got um, two devices that, that we've created. One is a seizure detection and monitoring device, which is the Speak system. Uh, I want to talk to you today about Seizure Link system, which is a consumer device. It is not a medical device. It is a personal alarm that's designed to detect tonic muscle activity. Our founder had a grandson with epilepsy. Um, he was getting to be middle school, high school age. Uh, they were very concerned about SUDEP because he had generalized tonic clonic seizures in the evening. Um, so mom and dad often co-slept with their son, which was becoming an issue. You don't want to be under surveillance all the time. You need a little bit of privacy in your life. So, so that's what we were all about, trying to find something that would detect this motor activity. They, we tried all the things that were based on motion, but there were false alarms. You got tired of being concerned all the time that something was going on just because a child or loved one was moving or going about doing their normal activities. So what Seizure Link does is looks at muscle. It, it measures electromyography, so the electrical signals that are generated by muscle activity and it, specifically, it looks at the biceps muscle. It's, it's really what we we're think of as the new standard in trying to figure out what's going on during a motor event. Um, it's the fastest one available, and uh, this has been tested out in a clinical trial prospectively, and it detected 94% um, generalized tonic-clonic seizures within an average of nine seconds. Um, and it does that because it's looking at the surface electromyography at 1,024 hertz. So over a thousand times a second, it's checking that muscle signal to see if any tonic activity is occurring. Um, and we've been looking at this a long time. It it's, isn't something that we were able to create overnight like we wanted to. It's taken us a decade. We, we started off doing experiments like this one. Um, this is someone acting out a seizure. So they were told by an epileptologist to do a tonic muscle contraction and then try to shake as violently as you can. And we did three measurements. Um, one is uh, accelerometry, which is on the top slide. So that's just motion. Um, then angular velocity, which is change in motion over time. And then on the bottom panel, you can see the EMG data that's recorded. So being able to look at that really rich, full data set allows us to have more information to work with compared to are you moving or not. And that's been uh, really the, the secret sauce of getting this personal device um, to work well. Um, again, as I mentioned, it was prospectively stu studied. Um, this group of 100 and something folks in an epilepsy monitoring unit had 32 generalized tonic clonic seizures and the device detected 30 of those. Um, again, average of nine seconds. And, and the best thing for us was that on average, um, someone would see a false alarm about every other day. So 1.7 every 24 hours. And what was really interesting is that two thirds of the people had no false alarms at all. So they were able to wear it for a week um, and, and they weren't disturbed by uh, an alarm going off when nothing was really happening. Um, and on average, it took 82 nights. So if someone's asleep, you're not getting these false alarms in the evening. Um, so some of the features of this, like I said, it's surface electromyography. It's not motion. It's measuring a real physiological signal. Um, thousand times a second, it does connect via Bluetooth to a phone or a tablet, something that has uh, the Seizure Link app on it. Um, it provides location-based services that warns your caregivers when one of these alarms goes off and gives an approximation of where they're at so you can find someone. Um, you can have up to 10 caregivers, and a caregiver can follow up to four heroes. That's what we refer to our, our friends with epilepsy as heroes because they've got to get up and battle this every single day. Um, as any other device, you'd, you'd expect that uh, we don't charge for alerts. It, your data is your data, and we feel like you should be able to uh, use the device as long as you can, and, and you expect uh, if it doesn't work for you, there's a, there's a guarantee. We'll give it back. And I'm, I'm going to go over some of the things in a little bit that Tom 
and the Danny Did Foundation put up for deciding on a device that's right for you because it may not be this, you know, people with atonic seizures or absence seizures with no tonic muscle activation, this wouldn't work, um, unfortunately. So how does it work? What does it do? It's really pretty simple. We have a booth, you can come check it out and hold one. Um, you, you put it on, it's got a little adhesive that attaches to the bicep muscle, and then you turn it on and you hook it up to an app. Pretty straightforward, not, <laughs> not a lot to talk about there. Um, but, but what do you get? I mean, it, it works on Android, Apple devices. Um, you get to see the status of your hero when you open up and try to figure out what's going on. Uh, you can see that they're wearing the device, that it's got a good connection, a good battery. As I mentioned before, you can have up to 10 caregivers and you can follow up to four people. Um, when an alarm goes off, there's an automated phone call to let everybody know what's happening. Um, events are logged in a seizure diary. And there's also a panic button. So if you have an aura coming on, you can call for help by pushing the device. Um, those two things I think are really important. You, even outside of being an alarm for this type of activity, it's really important to know when seizures are happening and take a good accurate record so that you can track your status. Because as Tom mentioned, seizure control is the best way to manage your epilepsy and your risk of SUDEP. Um, oftentimes people have seizures and, and you don't write it down. You know, a month goes by and you forget that you had three of them in one week. Um, it, even if it's as simple as writing it down, any kind of diary is helpful, but here's one that you can hold in your pocket. It's a little bit automated and, and it's something that stays with you no matter where you go. Um, We've done some preliminary testing. Uh, Seizure Link isn't available just yet, but it's on its way. We've had some folks walking around the world and using it, and, and they've had some, some really good examples. Um, Crystal has had epilepsy for many years. She's tried other devices, uh, but honestly, her husband didn't like them. There were too many alarms going off all the time. He was a nervous wreck. You, you know, um, he'd constantly be running to her side trying to help, and I was just washing the dishes. It's okay. Um, she's, she's had a really good experience with seizure link. Again, focusing back on that low false alarm rate, and when something really happens, now uh, she knows her husband will be at her side. Um, Chris is a parent. He has uh, two sons, and he, he's really really had a hard time um, teaching them what to do when a seizure happens and and what happens when you find daddy in another room and he's having a seizure um, so with this system he's been able to talk with them they know when something goes on and they know how to take care of him and be there for him when something does happen um, Sarah is another great example it is not my birthday I don't know who that was. <laughs> is it your birthday, Tom? This is his computer. <laughs> um, but Sarah's another great example. Um, I, I hear so many times uh, the frustration that patients have when they wake up in an ambulance. And this has happened to her because she had a seizure out and about somewhere and somebody called EMS. She wakes up in an ambulance, they're hauling her off to the hospital, the family doesn't know where she is, she doesn't know where she is, and by the way, she has seizures weekly and really doesn't need to go to the hospital every time she has one. Um, so she's been really living more confidently, knowing that her family's gonna be notified and know where she's at if something does happen. So just three great examples of how it's been working. And again, I wanna go over the Danny Did list because it's, it's just really a good list. Like, like Tom said, it makes good sense if you stop and think about it. Um, you, you need to pick something that's gonna detect the seizure type that you're interested in. Seizure Link, again, really focuses on tonic muscle contractions. Those are the, that's because we're looking for generalized tonic clonic seizures that are happening at night. That puts you at the highest risk for something terrible to happen. Um, you need to know your goals. Is it just trying to get to somebody at night or is it trying to get a better understanding of your seizure patterns, your seizure frequency? Are your seizures really as controlled as they possibly could be? Maybe you could 
just the ability to track these things, bring them to your physician to have a more informed discussion with them about your risks or your loved one's risks. Um, comfort's a huge thing. I, I have to fight my children every time it turns from winter to summer in San Antonio to put on long pants because they just don't like the way it feels, you know? Uh, uh, same thing with any kind of device. If, if, if you're not used to wearing a watch, then it's gonna be difficult to adjust to. Um, we, we've put the seizure link device on the bicep because it's really innocuous, it's, it's out of the way. It's covered by a t-shirt. When you sleep, you're not rolling over on it. It's not pressed up against your face at night. Um, but still something to consider. Um, usability, range of use is important. Uh, there's several monitors that I think are wonderful for um, managing and detecting events in the evening. Uh, the bed-based devices, they, they seem great, but you've gotta be in bed for it to work. Um, you know, what's the range that you want as far as can, can your loved one travel in and out of the home or do they need to be only monitored in the evening? Um, and then cost is, is always a factor. Um, that's why, you know, we're really, as a community, I think we should all tip our hats to the different organizations Danny did. There's another new one that I met there just yesterday. Their name escapes me at the moment. Maybe Tom can speak to that. Um, but helping people get to these things because I, I, I know cost is an issue. Um, so I, I also have a video. Tonic muscle contractions and their loved ones who fear what they may miss while they sleep. But help is here. Meet Seizure Link, the new standard in home seizure alerting. It's the fastest, most accurate consumer alerting system. Seizure Link's algorithm works with a signal on the biceps muscle that recognizes sustained tonic muscle contractions. With Seizure Link, muscle, not motion, is the new standard in alerting systems. Have better peace of mind with a remarkably high 94% accuracy rate for sustained tonic muscle contractions and an incredibly low false alarm rate of 1 per 82 nights. And with a nine second alert time, Seizure Link is the shortest link between an event happening and help arriving. Small and powerful, Seizure Link works with the muscle and helps provide the greatest accuracy, reliability, and independence. While you can't predict when an event will strike, you can live confidently with the power of Seizure Link. Muscle not motion, the new standard in alerting systems. So, um, with that, I, I think that's all that I, I had prepared for us to, to talk about today. I, I think it'd be a good time to have any questions. Uh, we're, a, we're a cozy group, so we can walk around and we've both got tables set up out in the expo area, so you can certainly feel free to, to stop by and talk to us there. Yep. So how long um, does each, how long will this stay on for us to change, including like shower? So it, it uses uh, a very gentle hydrogel that reminds me of like the little sticky hands you can get at a grocery store vending machine. Um, you can wear it several different times. It depends, but it's not resistant to moisture. So if you take a shower, it can slide off. If you go work out in the yard and get really sweaty, um, like I do, it could fall off. <laughs> um, but it it's lasts for several days. So if you were to shower, you just put it on the, on the table, dry off, and then put the same Yeah, exactly. And Luke, I noticed that it looks like you take something out and what was the piece that comes in and out? Yeah, so it's it's designed to have a battery that lasts for 24 hours, and it does. Um, our, our commercial, the diagnostic system, we learned that, uh, you know, we have two devices so that you can continuously wear it. This one, this one we learned a neat trick. You can take the battery out and just replace the battery while it's still on there. So uh, that's so you can continuously monitor for days and days while you recharge another battery. You don't have to stop wearing it.
Yeah, so you, you can go to seizurelink.com um, and you purchase the device and then uh, electrodes come 32 to a box and just kind of, we live in the world of Amazon now. It's kind of when you start running low, we don't have an easy button yet, but you just <laughs> order another box. <laughs> It does both. So, so there's an audible alarm on the device when something's detected, and, and it also has some little lights that blink on it. And can you turn that off? No, the. You can't turn the noise off. No, ma'am. My child, she has like startup seizures, so she stops seizing. The alarm is still going off. That could be another trigger for her. So, like the infant monitor or the infant on the mattress. Yeah, that's definitely something to consider. Um, it, you can cancel the alarm once it does go off if somebody's quick on the draw um, and say it's over. Um, the caregiver can do that? Yeah. What's the, what's the best guess at a timeline for getting this out to the community? Release um, this year, <laughs> before the end of the year. Uh, you know, app development and just pulling things together has been uh, a real race that I, I hate to promise next week because something will happen. You know, <laughs> uh, but just keep an eye out and I, by Christmas time. <laughs>